He paid for all of the sins, for all of the people, for all of time. You know, it doesn't take a double doctoral or a master's work. I'm not poking fun at anybody. Be who God created you to be, please. It always boils down to our relationship with Jesus. That, it, that relationship affects everything in our lives. God chose Israel. Our founding fathers chose God. Be a doer of the word. Because faith without works is dead, for real. That's religion, that's knowledge, that's intellect. You need to go out there and engage with your world and own your liberty. Living life as a worshiper. We were called worshipers before we were called Christians. And I, I believe that if we put our hearts into that and begin to ask the Holy Spirit to show us what that looks like in our own personal life, we'll understand it in a whole new way. Early in my journey, no, I'm going to say it because I believe it's the truth. I think it was the first question the Holy Spirit asked me. Because the Holy Spirit loves to ask me questions because it causes me to go down a rabbit trail. And I literally said, well, you know the answer to it, tell me. He asked me, what's the difference between worship and performance? Remember when I said I'd been performing since I was in fourth grade? I got performance. Choirs, ensembles, duets, quartets, trios, barbershop, rock and roll. Performance. Does that mean that I wasn't touched as I was worshiping the Lord? No, I was a water skier. And if I started singing How Great Thou Art when I was water skiing because I was having so much fun, the oh, snot and tears would be ripping as a Baptist kid. What the heck? It made no sense. A few of those great old hymns would strike a chord in my spirit, even not being spirit-filled, yet being full of Jesus, because it came from my heart in that moment. So when the Holy Spirit asked me that, I kind of did what I do in the relationship I have with the Holy Spirit, and I said, you know, you tell me. Cricket. <laughs> which I learned when the Lord doesn't speak to me, I learned over time, that means you do your part now. And I started looking at the early church. It was actually the beginning of me really studying the early church and what they did and didn't do. And they were called worshipers. Doesn't mean they were walking around singing praise tunes all the time. And they must have been singing psalms and singing tunes because that's part, right? According to the word that we're going to get into. Yet, we've lost it in some of these respects. And I want to take it back. I, in my life, I have taken it back. And the Lord blessed me with a worshiper as a bride. And the Lord blessed me in bringing into this family with a worshiper as a pastor of. And I'm not going to just say worship and praise because Pastor Ryan does so much more. And it's an honor and it's been a joy. And it is a joy. John 4.20 It's the woman at the well story. To put it in context for you. And the woman is saying to Jesus, our fathers worshiped on this mountain, but you Jews say that the place where one must worship is in Jerusalem. Go ahead. Jesus said, believe me, woman, Jesus replied, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. Sidebar, we worship here as a family. I worship everywhere I am. 
I do. Can. So I do. Because I'm thankful. I'm thankful. Okay, 22. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know. For salvation is from the Jews. But a time is coming and has now come. But a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers, Jesus even used it. I want to be called a true worshiper. I want to be called a true worshiper. I would say that to yourself over and over again till your soul agrees with it. If your brain grabs this concept, tell yourself that you want to be that so that you can become that. Hmm. But a time is coming and has now come, now, when the true worshiper will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such as these, such as who? Worshippers. Worshippers. To worship him. God is a spirit and his worshipers must worship him in Spirit and truth. God desires relationship. That's it. Part of that relationship is worshiping him for who he is, who he will be, and what he's done for me. It's why testimonies are so important. I once was. But God, look at me now. Done. I just summed up 59 years, 57, 56, 27 minutes. I don't care what it is. Because every day I can praise the Lord for what he gave to me that day. I can thank him for what he's done in and through me that day. I'm not who I was in the morning. Praise Jesus. Doesn't mean I'm a grumpy morning person. Am I a grumpy morning person? Okay, good. No, I don't want to go to bed the same that I got up. Because I'm moving from glory to glory to glory to glory. I'm moving deeper in him all the time. So that allows broad open space for worship and praise. Okay, I want to look at a few things, and I read this from a brother about a month ago and put this in these notes, and I might not even be able to say this in the spirit of Pete or Chris will fall on me. And he said this as a prayer. Father, your glory leaves me undone. Everything about you is lovely. I'm struck with the wonder of your beauty, of your holiness, and the splendor of your majesty. Moved by the way you welcome me into your presence, with hands lifted high and heart bowed in loving surrender, I honor you and I am so grateful to be yours. Truly, that heart will lead you into a place of being a worshiper. I am humbled and honored 
that his grace and his love can be on me in the way that it is. It's fascinating and glorious and something to be really excited about and why I don't suck lemons because it's thrilling to me. It's that easy. Worship is in the King James 102 times. The word worship. Praise 216. Kind of an important topic apparently. Yeah? Sidebar. If you take any of what I'm giving you and apply it like the law to your life or like a rule, I'm going to find you because the Holy Spirit's going to show me who you are. <laughs> this I know. It's got to be the ebb and flow that we walk in as spirit beings because we're humans second, we're spirits first, yeah? Okay. We must put our flesh in discipline of the spirit that resides in us. Yes. In yes. this place as well as others. But you can't make it a checkbox. Okay, good. Thank you. Because that would be really frustrating to know that that wasn't covered. Okay. So I just want to fly by some of the meanings of worship in the Old Testament, New Testament, praise in both, because that's where we read. And I want you to have a little better understanding of exactly what the terminology was in the Hebrew and the Greek, so that as you read the scriptures, you can go, wait a minute, Pastor Bob said, wait a minute, I heard Doc Ryan say, to start to draw yourself into these places and have a better understanding. So I hope that helps. First is shakal. To be prostrate on the floor. Second is sigid. Unabashed worship. Saw God, fall down, prostrate. Why are these terms important? Because I believe there's many things we don't do in the natural because we're too cool. We worry about what other people are thinking. These are clean. Floor, have you seen the... Stuff? Not here. Because our floor is really clean. Amen. I'll be wrinkly. What will they think? Okay. New Testament. Prashunico. Prashuno. Doc Ryan, I love you. And I know you'll help me with some of this over time. And Pastor Steve. Crouch, prostrate oneself in homage. C-B-O-I, out of Matthew. Revere and adore. See how some is a physical posturing and some is a heart attitude? Are you getting that yet? Okay, this is, I, I believe this is going to make a lot more sense to you. Lot ru. Do the service of worship. Render homage. That's kind of a both. Yeah? It is to me. Yo see ho. To be pious towards God in worship with respect. Proskini. To kiss. Kiss. To be so close and be in such intimacy during worship that it's like a kiss. 
and then it can also be used as being prostrate. So let's talk about praise, because some of these we've done. Yada. Does anybody remember yada? Yada, yada? Yeah, okay. Yep, yada, 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 yada. Are you going Jerry Seinfeld or Doc Ryan on this platform? Okay, good. <laughs> yep, okay. Confess, praise, be thankful. Yep, okay. Hilu is actually Mary, M-E-R-R-Y, praise. Mary praise. So in my mind, I see locked arms and spinning in a little circle. Ooh, we praise the Lord. That's merriment, no? That's merriment. OK, good. Um, yeah, that's merriment. T. Hill Law, a hymn. Wait, they had hymns then? Huh, that was used in Deuteronomy 10.21. They had hymns. That's awesome. Brock, this is a test again, quiz. Brock, what's that? Doc Ryan taught us that one here too. Huh? Yeah. So, to kneel, to bow. Halal. It's a sound to boast and or praise. So it's your voice again. Zomar, musical instruments. Tuda, confessions, confessions and a choir of worshipers. Adoration. So we're adoring the Lord when we're confessing. Another reason to confess is it's a testimony. A confession is a testimony, not a, I did wrong, I kicked the dog three times. No. When we're speaking out the goodness to the Lord, that's a confession. A testimony is a confession of what? Of his love and his grace and his mercy. Okay. Shabak. Commend, glory, praise in a loud tone. See why I get permission to hoop and holler and yell a little bit? Just saying, come on in, the water's really good. I promise. I will not tease you. I will not bring you astray, I promise. And if I do, I'll repent. But I'm telling you, this I know. Because the word says it, not me. Right. I'm just repeating it. And what the Lord does in those moments of passionate worship, you saw, worship, worship, worship. <laughs> you saw three hands go up today for people that got touched, a soul healing or a physical healing or something lifted or broke during worship. My guess is, that they were passionately involved in worship. I've never seen it happen another way. New Testament praise. Anios. Properly a story. Praise can be telling a story, a testimony. A neo, to praise God, to praise God. Pretty simple. Doxa. Dr. Steve just talked about this one a couple weeks ago. Doxa. Okay. It's got a pretty wide application, but glory, 
glorious honor, praise, and worship. Ianos, a commendable thing, praising for a commendable thing. can't wait to see everybody's face on this one. Epaneo. To applaud. You know what applaud means in the Greek? Applaud. <laughs> Am I against everybody clapping at the end of a song because a brother or a team or an individual had a good performance? No. I am all about clapping as the Lord leads me while I'm worshiping and praising, though. Because demons flee. Did you pay attention to the words today in these yeah, tunes? Yeah. They can't take it. And then, Homineo is a hymn, a, a religious ode to celebrate God in song. And last but not least, Aeneas, a praising act that is specifically a thank offering. A thank offering. Matthew 4.10, then saith Jesus unto him, get thee hence, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. You know, we have this worship thread throughout scripture for us, and I believe we kind of miss it because we get so used to what worship and praise is, is our first 40 minutes. I want to encourage you to be a lifestyle of worshipers and praisers. And it is two different things. Two different things. So, Pastor Ryan, will you please join me? We are so blessed to have a worshiper as a worship pastor. And, I, and I'm going to say it again. He is so much more than a worship pastor, worship leader, rugged leader. And for this moment, we're going to talk about his heart as a worshiper. And I want to just kind of explore a little bit of that with our brother um, as we dive into this a little bit more as to what we can be. Amen? Okay. I'm so blessed, honestly. <laughs> this blesses my heart. Amen. <clears throat> so, do y'all know where Pastor Ryan grew up in church? Like, was he, did he, was he, uh -huh. was he ejected into this realm as a worshiper? <clears throat> Worshiping when he was a baby? Why don't you tell us how that worked out? How, the, how did this, how did this revelation come into your life to bring you to where you are today? Is as a worshiper. All right. Uh, so I grew up going to church, um, but my parents kind of hopped around from church to church. So I got a little bit of many different stuff. I went to uh, a private Christian school that was an Assembly of God uh, church. So we went there for a while, and then I went to a Baptist. Uh, and then we ended up moving over. Uh, I used to live in Woodstock. And then we moved over this direction, and my family started going to Crossroads, and that's uh, kind of where my uh, relationship with the Lord really started. And uh, I had a pretty radical encounter uh, at youth camp, and I remember just every time we would um, have worship at youth group, I would come home and I'd tell my mom, like, I just feel so close to God during that time. And uh, it's always been something I always enjoyed, just watching uh, 
people lead the team, whoever was leading, just kind of always enjoyed seeing how they communicated, what it was, and how it sounded. Worship was just always something that was uh, enjoyable for me and intriguing to me. Um, and um, Jesse and I got married, and we went on, uh, I think it was our five-year anniversary trip. Most of you have heard this before, that uh, I wrote down what I, we shared our dreams, what we wanted to do, and uh, one of those things was that I wanted to uh, create my own worship band and lead worship, and at the time I wasn't even, I didn't even play an instrument at the time. Uh, it was just a desire of my heart. Um, so it was something that I wanted to do, um, and then uh, we were about, I don't know, well, we were 19 years old, and we started a youth group, and then I just kind of always stayed in communication with my pastor of what I desired for worship, and I always said that I, or I told him, shared with him that I uh, wanted to lead worship, so I started uh, serving on the worship team, uh, and then eventually it led to um, him asking me to uh, become on staff full-time, and so I was there. Uh, full-time, and then I was a year, and one of the requirements was when I got hired was I had to learn uh, piano and guitar, and so I had to learn that in a year, and then a uh, year came, and um, our worship leader at the time, uh, she wanted to have a sabbatical and go on a sabbatical and have a little break, because she had been leading worship for uh, since the church had started, um, and so they said, here you go, we want you to uh, lead, you've learned the piano in a year. You, you, can't, you can't learn an <laughs> instrument in a year, and especially two of them. So a lot of, uh, a lot of the stuff at the beginning was very, very simple, but that's just kind of where, uh, and it's just grown from there. The Lord has just been faithful to surround me with amazing people to help me along the way, and then also uh, develop me and my uh, skills and worship. Amen. And I didn't know that, so I'm, thank you. I didn't know all of that. Um, when, when you were a teen and you'd go home to your mom and, and say that worship really moved you, what did that look like? Was it certain words, certain songs, certain moments, certain mix of people? Um, a lot of it was, I would say, probably just even the beat of the song, even, was the start of it. Like just the beat, and then from there it turned into the words. The words that they were singing um, after the beat had drawn me in, it was just, it, the, I would say the beat prepared my heart and let the Lord speak to my heart once mm -hmm. that beat drew me in, and then it was the words that they were, were singing that just, I just, it, it led me to sharing and, and asking the Lord questions, so... So do you remember any of the questions? Any of the ways that you no. postured your heart to draw into that place? Mm, probably not. I, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe? I don't know. Okay, no, got it. No, that's an um, unrehearsed question. Z. <laughs> yep, here we yep. go. Thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> yep, yep. But it's a heart posture. It's the heart posture. It was the same thing for me, and it was old hymns. Because that's what I knew. And not the whole hymn, just parts thereof. And I know I've come in with a hymn that the Lord's had me share when I'm sharing here in our family um, that's important to what he's going to have me share. Because it doesn't matter that it's a 2024 release. It doesn't, it's a posture of your heart Amen. for the concept of what you're speaking. Amen. For the verbiage that you're speaking, which is why we're so blessed that Pastor Ryan spends the time to make sure what we're speaking out over ourselves lines up with the Word of God. Anybody listen to radio? Christian radio, I mean. And I say that tenuously. I'm all about listening to the radio, I guess. Yet... Man, if you start to agree with and speak out those things over yourself, 
don't wonder why some of the things are happening that aren't in line with God's word because you're not speaking God's word out. Amen. You're not speaking truth. Amen. And they're great songs, but it's a top 20 song. <laughs> yeah, awesome. For all those people, I guess. Maybe somebody should tell them what the word of God says on that topic and they wouldn't sing that out over themselves. And then maybe that wouldn't be manifesting in their life that way. Don't want to be word police yet. I love being word police. Another part of this body being the body, and the body parts that are great at correction can bring correction to everything we say. It's not just the songs that we sing. It's the verbiage that comes out of our mouth that a brother or sister catches and goes, oh, do you really want to say that over yourself? Uh, no. Amen. Thanks. But it requires submission. The word that makes everybody happy. <laughs> you want to all go to your happy place? Let's go to that place. <laughs> okay, back to worship. I had my first encounter with the feeling. I didn't say emotion. I said feeling. I can feel the table. I can feel my chin. That feeling. At a Promise Keepers event in Minneapolis, and I don't remember what year. It was the year we did the Metrodome one. And it was the largest group ever in that Metrodome. And I was an elder of a Baptist church in Freeport. My grandfather was a Baptist minister. I grew up in the Baptist church. I was kind of Baptist, you could say. <laughs> a little bit. And praise God for the word that they planted in me, because it can never be corrupted. I, yeah, so don't hear that I'm whining or complaining. or po That word is unshakable in my foundation. So I'm very thankful for it. But... Got a little bit of blowback from the pastor because, you know, it's that vineyard movement. Those guys that worship with their hands in the air and stuff. And you're going to go to that thing, and there's a few of you going, and I'm a little concerned. And I said, it'll be okay. I was the only elder in the group. Ah, it'll be okay. It's going to be fine. I said, pastor, don't even worry about it. It'll be good. We're going to have a good time. It'll be fine. Well, I talked to my cousin, another Baptist grandchild, whose mom was also a PK kid in the Baptist church, who grew up in the Baptist church, and just graduated from Bethel College and Seminary in Minneapolis. Jimmy, you should meet us at this event. He lived in Minneapolis. Did I say we were going to Minneapolis? Huh? So there stands Jimmy. <whistles> and great is thy faithfulness, as I think the song they were singing, and everybody's hands are going up. In this, there are more people in the Metro Dome than had ever been in there before. It was a sea of men. And everybody's raising their hands. Huh. That was pretty. Whoa. Ha. Jimmy, put your hand up. <laughs> so Jimmy was about Pastor Ryan's size. So I, when I look and I'm talking about Jimmy over here, he is just a little shorter than me. Still. And I never knew what it was. And I never understood what it was. And it wasn't emotion. It wasn't what I told you I was sensing on a water ski. Or then I learned I, that could happen to me when I was riding, whenever I was having fun. Riding my bike really, really, really fast, right on the edge of wiping out, you know that? Because there might have been a little emotion in that. Might. But, Merely putting my face towards the Lord and extending my hands, palms out, so I could grab all that he was laying out. I don't care what else, how else you say it. And it started there. And it was still years till I had the encounter Pastor Ryan had when he was at youth camp. Years. But I began to understand worship in a different way. And I could start to sing songs that brought more songs, that brought me to that place of his presence into his realm, getting out of this earthly nonsense 
and being able to be directly tied to him in that way that we were meant to be as spirit beings in the first place. I'm just going to touch on feelings versus feelings for just a minute. It's one of these American verbiage things that is a real struggle. Because we have feelings and then we have feelings. Okay, so I'm the only person. I'll just move on. I got more notes. It's a big difference. And we don't want to be run by our feelings. We do not want to be run by our emotions. We are not chasing emotions or feelings. We're chasing Jesus. And throughout the word, Old Testament and New Testament, there are things that happen in the kingdom of God that cause us to experience things. Can we talk about how many times people were knocked down on their side, on their face, their knees shook? Anyway, so hear me when I say feelings. I'm not saying feelings. I'm saying feelings. Are we clear? Because we don't get run by emotions and I don't chase feelings. I'm not doing anything while I'm worshiping to feel anything. Right. I am chasing Jesus. I am hanging out in the heavenlies. Amen. Okay. And many times there's feelings involved. Yep. And his presence feels different. It, an atmosphere changes. Why? Because we're, as worshipers, releasing heaven. It's what we're supposed to be doing. Okay, three of you agree with that. Maybe four. Okay, our call is to what? What was the Lord's Prayer? That we would bring heaven to earth. Yep, release it. When you're worshiping, I watch you in the natural, struggling to pay attention to what's going on here and doing a really good job of it because you're still singing and doing words and whatnot. How do you facilitate that? <laughs> did I say none of these were practiced? Because I really did mean none. But really, truly, how do you bring yourself to that worshipful stance when you have functions to do? Because to me, that's no different than driving your car, washing the dishes. If he can do it when he's standing up here playing a guitar, why can't you do it when you're driving your car? Why can't you do it when you're in the shower? Why can't you do it when you're running a garden hole? Why can't you do it when you're mowing the grass? Why can't you do it? Why can't you do it? Why can't you do it? He's going to remove those excuses right now. Full faith in my brother. Well, I would say the biggest thing is, is what those things that you just said. That I don't just come here and do a function. I'm living a lifestyle of Dad. worship. I'm, I'm, as I'm mowing the yard, as I'm driving my motorcycle, as I'm, as I'm doing whatever, my lifestyle is a lifestyle of worship. Though I stand here and I have a function to do as the leader, it's still, I don't want to say practiced, but it's normal. It's the normal. It's not something that I stand here and function in. Though there is a grace that's on me to do it in those moments as the leader, it's, it's natural. It's normal. It's my lifestyle that I live. So it's, it's not that I step into something and operate in something that's foreign to me. It's my lifestyle. That, and it just... It's not a light switch. He's disciplined himself to be able to do that. That's why. So, couldn't have been, a, it's exactly, that's exactly what I thought was going to come out of that, honestly, because I know he lives a lifestyle as a worshiper. You've got to discipline yourself. Shut off Oprah. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. I, I don't watch. I don't I'm watch. sorry. Whatever that is. And to worship the Lord but, while you're doing stuff. 
the thing is also, it's not like you just float around like, oh, praise the Lord. Like, it, you're doing your normal stuff. It's not like this weird thing. It, 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 you say discipline as well, but it, it, is, it is to a degree, but it's not like everything is fantastic, great all the time. It's, it's, I'm still Ryan. I'm still in the natural. I'm still... You're still taking care of your bride, your children, yeah. your farm, your animals, your bus driving, your, this building, right? You're still being you. Yet, you choose, and you've disciplined yourself to choose the king over another option in that moment. Yeah. I worship when I'm mowing the grass. I worship when I'm in the shower. It's a, because it's a heart posture. No differently than walking me, up to me here in worship, I can be working on something on the tool bench, and Allie can come up and interrupt me, or have a question or whatever, and I don't mean interrupt in a bad way, so please. And it takes me a second to gather myself up. Because even though my hands are functioning, I'm worshiping my creator. Amen. Amen. That, that's what Pastor Ryan just spoke to. So sometimes it's just speaking in tongues. That's worship. Testifying. Am I the only person in here that talks to themselves? No. Oh, praise God. So, wait, this is really good. All right, so I'm going to encourage you. Start to call it a staff meeting. You all got your own things that you do. Yeah? You don't have to own a business to have a staff meeting. I'm in conversation with myself about this right now. <laughs> Okay, so it's been the really funnest part of Allie and I coming in covenant and living together because I don't know if she's talking to herself half the time or she's trying to say something to me and I'm not hearing all of it. Now I'm in trouble. Well, not in trouble, but you know what I mean. I got you. Okay, so I might be in trouble. I got you. <laughs> and the same thing goes this way. Yeah. Did you say, say no, no, no. Shakarada, sibarada, barra. Whatever. So Bill Johnson said, call it a staff meeting. And I love it. I took it years ago. I just stole it. And I gave him credit one more time, probably the last time. <laughs> it's perfect. That. That. Because we just learned worship is not just song. You don't have to put on your Pandora or your Spotify and sing along. Right. Yeah. No, you don't. Right. Do I? Uh-huh. Right. Do I? No. I have a picture of my bride having a moment with the Lord staring at a hayfield. And the Lord put her to her knees. And there she was. She had no idea I even saw it. I don't even know if she knows I got the photo. It's those moments. I'm going to change the lock on my phone because she might. <laughs> but if Come I on. can add. Yeah, it is, it's not just putting on the music. The only time that I worship or praise isn't when I got earbuds in and music playing. Like, one of the, this is one of my favorite stories to tell. Some of you might know, most of you probably know, I am a deer hunter, and I love to sit in the deer stand. And uh, one thing that you can't do is you can't play music in the deer stand, right? You gotta be quiet. So I'm praising the Lord, and... The most important thing about hunting deer is you have to be quiet. <laughs> and uh, this one time, I was so <coughs> overwhelmed by just the goodness of God. I was praising him for his creation, just looking around, looking at everything. And I am literally in the deer stand. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, there are going to be no deer that come in. <laughs> Praise God. I still had a good time. But, like, it's it's it's... Not just music. Music isn't the only thing. It's circumstances. It's, it's, it's the be beautifulness of his creation. Praise him for the little things yes. that, that are around you, that he's created for us to enjoy. That is the, the worship. That's the, that's the lifestyle. That's it. 
And how can he get to that place? Because he has his heart in the right place. Because God is good. Amen. God is blessing our socks off. Amen. Amen. His favor's all over us. And with that heart set, you'll go to those snot and tear moments in a heartbeat. Glad I'm not the only one that sat in a deer stand tears. <laughs> And when it's really cold, like this year's not, there's snotsicles that freeze just like that. It's the grossest thing ever. I like it. Yeah. You know it's true. It's true. Yeah. Especially if you have facial hair. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I, I wrote a couple of things that we've already covered that really lead me into that place corporately in a little different way. I got kind of good at forgetting you all are in the room. Unless the Lord leads me to pray for one of you in that moment, which he does, or to pray in tongues, or to sing in tongues, or to declare over someone or over this room. I don't even know y'all are here. Just don't. I Don't expect me to be singing the right words if you come near me. <laughs> Just saying. It's not that I don't want to, and it's not that I'm doing it on purpose, but my, my heart is with him, and yes, I do sing the right words, and I sing along, but I've disciplined my flesh to get out of the way and allow my spirit to worship Amen. its creator, Amen. just like that. Amen. That allows me to leave the world behind. In the professional world of worship leader, well, you know what your main job is. I, I've read it and I've heard it taught. Your main job is to lead them into worship and get them to focus on the Lord as opposed to the world they walked in with. Well, kind of, sort of. And not at all. To me. And I could be wrong, I'm not, trust me, and this is not something Ryan and I talked about either. But the fact is, I believe we need to go directly into relationship with Jesus in that moment. Direct intimacy. And if it takes a song or two for that to happen, praise God, it can take a minute for me too. But we're not singing songs purposefully to do that. We're speaking truths over ourselves in praise and adoration and honor Amen. that lead us into that place. How come words and knowledge flow during worship? Both from worshipers and people that are in the family worshiping. Why is that? Because those are in a place of out of here. Nobody else around them is bothering them. They don't care. And the Lord goes, hey, will you deliver this? Huh. Yes, sir. Honored. Amen honored and it's not their flesh yeah how come some people just smile <laughs> come on you know we've seen them I'm not I, I don't see anybody so I can't pick on anybody in here but quite literally that's the way they're enjoying the Lord in that moment and it's okay to enjoy the Lord in the moment that way and to be full of snot and tears and be clapping <laughs> or to be screaming, or to be singing along with perfect verbiage on the songs that are on the screen. All things are okay. I don't do it either. Following the words on the screen, that is. Yeah. Sometimes I get them wrong. Thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> Why do some people cry during worship? Ever wonder? Well, we've talked a little bit about it, that joyful heart and going into snot and tears just in, in because he's so good. Amen. Because he's so good. And some people are releasing and being healed from, which is what we were talking about before. Amen. They're having a breakthrough. Amen. 
So I want to encourage us all to really use very good discernment in the spirit. If you see somebody at the altar or standing crying during worship, you don't have to intervene as a humanoid. Let the Lord do what the Lord's doing. And there are absolutely times the Holy Spirit will say, you know what, just go sit with them. Don't touch. Or touch. But the Lord's already doing the work. We don't need to assist. Now, if you're in that place that you're wondering what's going on over there and the Holy Spirit didn't breathe on it in the first place, you're not in worship to start with. You're looking around going, what's Rich doing? Okay. None of the pain, the soul wounds, the sickness, the disease can exist in Jesus. Amen? Amen. So when we're in worship and we're in him, I have fully come expecting to hear about miracles, signs, and wonders, and freedom only from worship. <coughs> but nobody laid hands on me. I know! Don't have to. Because right. it's already done. Right. You just got far enough out of the way to receive it. So we talked about God's mandate to worship and praise, yeah? Deuteronomy? Yeah. Okay, good. Make sure I did do that. James 1, 21, please. Huh. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and every expression of evil and humbly... In a submitted way, you could say. Accept the word planted in you, which can save your souls. For anyone who hears the word but does not carry it out is like a man who looks at his face in the mirror. After observing himself, goes away immediately and forgets okay. what he looks like. I want us to begin to do this in a way we never have before and not forget when we walk away. We're different now at noon or 2 o'clock this afternoon or whenever that is that we're done. I do have a lot of notes. I, what is... I got <laughs> because this is so simple. It's so simple. You know, when I was talking about the early church before, do you know how simple the early church was? They didn't carry around the Torah. They didn't have the New Testament yet. And it was the fastest growing church in the world. What did they do? They praised the Lord. They worshiped the Lord. And they worshiped the Lord by telling testimonies. Amen. That's it. Wait. Nope. That was it. Until the apostles started teaching doctrine, which they did in accordance with or alongside of testimonies and praise and worship. It was the fastest growing time in church history, and it was so simple. It's why Andrew can call the gospel the too good to be true. Simple, simple gospel message. A.W. Tozer has written a bevy of books. A Man After God's Own Heart in Our Time. This is a quote from him. We've almost forgotten God as a person and as such can be cultivated as any person can. Anybody in relationship with anyone else? Uh-huh. Do you have to cultivate your relationship? 
to grow into intimacy, to get to know each other better. Relationships take cultivation. They take time. They take focus, attention. Yeah? Yeah. It is inherent in personality to be able to know other personalities, but full knowledge of one's personality by another cannot be achieved in one encounter. You can't live on 10 years ago encounter with Jesus, y'all. Right. Right. And we've got people with pulpits with millions of people following them talk about 10 years ago. I want to hear about this morning. I want to hear about the revelation you got last week. I want to know about the miracles in your life today. Amen. Not to be a jerk. I want the real. I don't want last year's. Right. It's awesome last year, and I love the testimony. I love the testimonies of what God did to you to bring you to who you are today. Some of that goes back decades for most of us. But I want to know the now, because that, that's the fruit of the intimacy you're in today. Not the fruit of the intimacy you were in then. It is only after long and loving mental intercourse that the full possibilities of both can be explored. Boom. Genosco. Loving mental genosco that the full possibilities of both can be explored. Truth. Those times that Ryan is doing the lawn or shoveling straw or driving, that he's in worship, being the worshiper that he was created to be, that is being in intimacy with the Lord and knowing. And Ryan's getting to know him more. And God is getting to instill things in him, spirit to spirit, that he wouldn't if he wasn't open to that moment. That's how people get healed during worship in our room and at home or at their friend's house. I mean, we all have these relationships that we purposefully cultivate. Can we all find more ways to praise him and worship him? I know there's always times, and there's always more. And, and just being totally transparent, I could be off doing something like, oh, i got to run outside and fill the wood burner, and not make that 15 minutes a time of worship and praise, yet I don't have anything else to think about. I can throw wood into that dumb wheelbarrow, and roll it over there, and pitch the wood in there, and make sure that everything's rolling right, and be done with it, and be in worship the whole time. How come I got to be thinking about something else? I want to be purposeful. I want to be purposeful. Do you want to be purposeful? Yeah. So find those ways, because he will draw you in. If you open yourself up, he will draw you in. His word says it, so it's a promise. Second Chronicles 16, 9, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in behalf of those whose heart is perfect towards him. Fully devoted to him. You have acted foolishly in this matter. From now on, therefore, you will be at war. Okay, in context... That was a hot mess there. Yet his word is truth. For the eyes of the Lord roam to and fro over the earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are fully devoted to him. Are you focused on him or just a little bit? Well, I'm a Christian. See my badge? It says Christian. It's okay. Or are you really engaged with him? Because he will draw you in. In this covenant, we are the tabernacle of God. He dwells with us, in us.
Pastor Ryan, do you sing in tongues? Yeah. When you're by yourself? Yeah. Do y'all sing in tongues? Yeah. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit and you speak in tongues, you really should speak, you really should discipline your flesh to allow the Holy Spirit to sing in tongues. It's beautiful. Sometimes it's just a joyful noise, though. Amen. I don't know. Sometimes it's weird. But. I, <laughs> yep. And, it, and if you're looking for pitch perfect oh, yeah, and perfect half steps and quarter steps and full steps, <laughs> never for me. Yeah. Don't criticize yourself. Right. Allow the spirit in you to do what it's going to do. I've had people over the years say, I, I, that can't be tongues I'm speaking because it sounded so weird. <gasps> really? That's more than likely tongues. You're trying to make sense of it intellectually. Stop it. You're a spirit. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. These are all scriptures that we can and should live by. And I'm, I, I just I want to continue to shore us up in this place of a thankful heart. A thankful heart. And it's been a thread for quite a while here. And praise God. Amen. Amen. Because we're an incredible body, you guys. We're an incredible body. Doing incredible things for our king. With incredible fruit. And we got some growing to do. At least I do. I, I, want, I want the deepest water possible. I want as much as I can have that he feels I'm ready for. Because he'll only give me what I'm ready for. All a matter of the heart. Amen. Amen. Brian Simmons, that wrote the Passion Translation, um, sends out emails with words of encouragement and uh, scriptures. <clears throat> and he sent this a couple of weeks ago. My spirit is alive within you. Who's the use here? Right. Wait, that was funny. The use. It's another term for sheep. Okay. Anyway. It is. <laughs> All that I am is inside you. All. My power is not diminished because it has found a home in a flesh temple. I am vast enough to fill all creation, yet wise enough to fit my spirit within vessels of humanity. Hallelujah. Sidebar. That hallelujah was a praise. Ever wonder why some people say praise the Lord or hallelujah at nauseum? Uh, I mean it. When I say it, Amen. I encourage you to get there. Never limit the greatness of my glory within you. Ha! Ah! That's what I did when I read this. Never let the virility of your humanness be reason to doubt what I can do through you. Know your identity. For me, I shored up my identity in Christ by his word and through intimacy. Because he kept telling me who I am. Amen. And he kept putting boldness in those areas that was not bold. I know, it's hard to believe. I would have areas that I'm not bold in. But, yep. My strength is not limited by the weakness of its surroundings. <laughs> Isn't that all? Come on. That's God in you. You're not limited based on your surroundings. 
Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Take that altitude when you're worshiping. And I did mean altitude. Get out of here. You're a spirit being. Yep. I am God after all. The voice of my spirit is alive within you, and you were created to hear, to speak my truth, and to declare my love. My compassion tugs at your heart, but it's up to you to respond. When you walk with me and recognize the greatness of my glory alive within you, you will do what few have dared to do. You will be a light in the darkness. Encouragement to the weary, hope to those who have no hope. Partner with me and allow me to work through you, and you will see greatness and glories, greatness and glory in ways that you've never known. Amen. Amen. Living as a worshiper, you all, will bring you to a place in your journey that I believe will amaze you. It did me. It really did. And it took some discipline because I'm kind of a knothead. Oh, I used to be kind of a knothead in some areas. And so it was hard for me to not focus on the thing in the natural that needed to be, get accomplished. And so I had to discipline myself to stop that and realize his word is true and the great helper is with me so I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And with his Holy Spirit giving me all the revelation and information I need about how to do that, what the heck do I need to do except work in the physical and let that happen while I'm worshiping him? At least in my heart, if not with my mouth as well. The aforementioned staff meeting. Can I share a little? Please. Okay. Um, so one of the things about that lifestyle is it's not like you're just going around and you're pushing the wheelbarrow just praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. It's all the little things. Like what does it look like? What does your praise look like? It's breaking down those little things. Father, I thank you that you've given me the money to purchase this wheelbarrow so I don't have to carry the wood from here to there by hand. Father, I thank you that you have given me the ability to split this wood, to put this. I thank you for this land that you have just all the little things and break it down there. And that is how your praise will grow. And that's how your hearts will be changed in every situation. You can literally turn any situation into a positive, even if it's a, if it's a task. It's praising the Lord that he's blessed you with the hands and the ability to do it. And I thank you that you've given me the strength to throw this wood in here. Whatever it is, any yeah. task, and turn it into a praise. Don't look at it as, I got to do this thing. Look at it as, how can I praise the Lord through this? How can I honor the Lord through this? What can I praise you for in this? What do you want to speak to me in this? What do you want to show me in this? And all of those things will, the praise, praise is to the Lord, but it's for us. Worship is about honor. That's from the heart. But praise is for us, reminding us, what God has done for Amen. us, who he is, the thankfulness that's in us. Praise is to him, but for us. It's for our hearts to get right. It's for our heart attitudes to get right. Praise is to God, but for us. Worship is about honoring those things, honoring the Lord. Worship is an intimate, honorable thing. Amen. So. Well said. Yeah. You can always find a way to praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Always. Some people choose not to. It'll never work. Lemon suckers. They're everywhere. We have that, we have that opportunity all the time. But go ahead. It's, it's such an amazing process. I don't get up here to draw attention to myself. But I believe the Holy Spirit just had me write that down for the two of you who are on the topic. Amen. There is so much because it is so broad 
and we limit things that are broad in the kingdom of God. We put it in a nice, tidy little box, and we, we expect it to stay within that box, and maybe it comes out a little bit once in a while this way or whatever. And, and I want to encourage you all to grasp the fact that our God is limitless. And the way we can walk in him in worship as a worshiper is limitless. And it's all a matter of the heart. So it's, you know, Tom just, it, yep, yeah, it's gratitude. It's respect. It's being in awe and wonder. I know I've said here before, there's times my head's sideways and there's a little drool coming out of one side. It's like, oh, you're so good. You're so good. Amen. And sacrifice, we do sacrifice ourselves. That's the disciplining ourselves. We discipline ourselves to do what Ryan just said with the wheelbarrow. And what he didn't know was, I didn't have a wheelbarrow for a while. I was praising the Lord for that wheelbarrow when I bought that. Because I carried, not only did I go do a semi-load of wood every year, I carried it from the woodshed by head to the word burner. So I do praise the Lord for that. That. Amen. That. Amen. A thankful heart. In all th yeah, but everybody's got a car. Okay. Don't. I do. Yeah. It's a powerful thing, and you'll see the change in how you look at things, how you appreciate things. Even in that, everyone has a car. Well, praise God I have money to put gas into it, and it got me here safely. And Lord, I thank you that you protected me. Every, every little thing is an opportunity yeah. for us to yeah. praise the Lord, and it does wonders for our heart. You can't yeah. have a bad day and praise the Lord. Amen. You just can't do it. Try it. You can't. Yeah. Once you start thinking of his goodness and what he's done and praising him, you can't have a bad day. You can't have a bad attitude. And it's contagious. It's contagious. Amen. All those around you, while you're joyful and happy and yippy skippy because you're going about your life and your business, praising the Lord for all the positive things he's done to you. Guess what happens to everybody that comes in contact with you? You worshiper, you. <laughs> now they're going to want some of it. We're contagious. Amen. We leak all over those we're around. Positive or negative. Right. Right. And sometimes we even move our mouths. Right. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. Okay. I pray this was a great way to start the new year. And I really look forward to worshiping together as a family next week. We have awesome worship, you guys. We, we, indeed. And we're blessed to have a great worship pastor and people that worship alongside of him to lead us into places that many don't go. So we're blessed. Praise the Lord just for that this week and see what happens. Amen. And then I look forward to worshiping together next week. Amen. It'll be awesome. So if you'd please rise. Please receive the blessing that the Father has for you. He calls you beloved, the ones that are greatly loved. And we, he and I both desire that you experience prosperity and his type of divine health. And the way this happens is by allowing your soul to prosper through intimacy with him and knowledge of his word. I love you and I'll see you again soon.